guys, welcome back to Everyday Struggle. I am Madeska. I know academics and Wayno are very excited for this Thursday, Friday special episode of Everyday Struggle. Well, it's actually not that special, but I know you guys are excited to get to some of the fuckery. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm excited to talk about music, but, but I'm also excited that, hey, I, I'm in contact with one of them looters that looted Icebox. I'm about to cop one of them, you know, uh, looted uh, Rollies. So, Wayno, I might join, join the Rollie gang soon. I was I was okay until I looked at Academics' hoodie and, and it took a real strong gander to see a shark with rainbow teeth. So today I feel like Ak is gonna be on some bullshit. You know? Well, we knew that was coming. Ak, also you're setting back some. It's a movement. colorful day. Do not support looters. It's a looters. colorful day. Not support the looters. You yes. know how many rollies they took? Where do you think them rollies gonna go? Go back to the store? No. Like you know, it ain't like the Apple like phones that go back. Somebody got to buy them rollies, and I'm tired of Wayne O'Shawn. And by the time I come, by the time I get to set, whenever that is 2021, I'm gonna come in looking like Gunner. Okay, I got everything out of the Louis store. The, the That's gonna store. be disgusting. That's gonna be disgusting. <laughs> Don't hit on the jerk. Don't hit on the jerk. <laughs> a Rolex with a struggle fit. We can't wait. Academics. All right, Bro, let's get I'm into getting this. everything out of Lennox. <laughs> uh, so Nicki Minaj and Six Nine have announced their new single. It is called Trolls. Uh, they reveal that they're also dropping merch with the single. And Nicki says that a portion of the proceeds from the songs and merch are going directly to the Bail Project, which uh, provides obviously free bail assistance to low-income individuals who cannot afford to pay it so this will be six nine's second single since he came home from jail or prison wherever he was uh his second single with nikki remember they collabed on fifi that did well for them all right so of course nikki caught a lot of heat for announcing this collaboration the barb stepped in to defend her and then it seemed like she responded in a statement where she's saying you don't have to defend me i'm not afraid of internet trolls blogs and artists but it was actually an old statement that they dug up from 2018. Mm. okay thoughts on this we know the akon collab is coming too but I, I mean, I feel like this record was released I couldn't with a disclaimer. I could wait to hear Wayno's opinion I, on this. No, seriously, I feel like the, the record was released with a disclaimer. Is 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 really to, you know, sympathize she, herself so people would leave her alone a bit. I like. I, I really want to know. See, what I really want to know is like she said. Act. She said that she don't jump on bandwagons or nothing like that. Do you think? That even when she jumped on Fifi, she just got on the record because she really liked Six Nine or she really liked the record. Or do you think at that time it was a bandwagon moment? Well, 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 well let me clean that up a little bit. So apparently that that statement right was actually a statement from 2018. So she didn't recently say it, but uh-huh. her fans in defending her since she hasn't said oh, they anything. Went and pulled that. Mm. They 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 pulled that which they're thinking is in line with her thinking. She really hasn't said anything other than that a portion of the proceeds will go back. But anyway, um in terms of what you said and why she's doing a record with 6ix9ine, yeah, I, I think Nikki is a astute and smart businesswoman. And I think she knows what's hot. And I think she knows that, hey, listen, uh if you're hot, usually in the industry, you associate with other people who are hot. And I think she's looking at it like, hey, she just had a number one record with Doja Cat. She could maybe continue and follow up or at least have a great look with 6 9 at least just on the charts. I think that's all she's thinking about and caring about at this moment. Mm, okay, uh, so do you think that her getting possibly a number one record is worth some of the criticism she's going to face? I mean, Nicki could collaborate with a lot of people. You know, 6 9 is not her only option. Uh, I, I think it's the easy one of the easier ways how to, you know... Um, like, she's worked with him in, before in the past. I just don't think she care about backlash that much. I think Nikki, in the last couple of years, if we're listening to her, right, she's felt like so many people outside of her fan base has given her backlash for one move or the other or just treated her unfairly. I think she's at a point of saying, man, fuck it. Y'all can't cancel me, which, by the way, she's a legend. She won't be canceled, even though there will be backlash. And to be honest, I think the backlash pales in comparison to what Akon got. I think, you know, people, other artists were more outspoken about Akon as opposed to Nicki because Nicki notoriously is known for blackballing people and getting people to fuck out of here. So who the hell is going to speak up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that Nicki just, like, everything that could possibly be said about her has been said. So maybe that's why she doesn't really care too much about backlash. But as far as the the whole thing with the bill shit is just kind of weird to me only because it's like, so it's 6 9 You know what I mean? Like... I, I, I don't look explain, at... Explain, explain. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, the the, the whole thing with the bill thing, like, it's cool, but, like, you doing something with 6 9 I, to Me, personally, I feel like he represents 
a lot of Rome morally, and I and, and not only that he that he represents Rome morally, I feel like putting it in a position where it has to do with something with the judicial the uh, judicial system where he used the whole judicial system as kind of like a flip to get out is just kind of ironic. I can understand that take. I can understand that take, and and shit, I wouldn't disagree with you. Uh, I, I do think that anyone putting out music now, like I think it's the way to kind of, you know, bring the conversation back to music because you know there are bigger things that's going on in the world right now. So everyone says, hey, part of my the proceeds of my new book that I'm promoting, my new movie, my new TV series, and also my new song, which is kind of about a bunch of nothing. Uh, we'll we'll throw some money back into the uh the bail fund so we're down with the movement we're just trying to you know what i mean still you know dancing I, and have some fun for a while yeah i don't think i mean the whole thing is it's presented no matter what if nikki says it's presented by six nine so i don't know if six nine is for innocence i think he's just for saving his own ass when it's convenient so mm. that's that's right. that's how i feel about that well if akon you know took those first darts and and now nikki do you guys think because axe big theory was they were just waiting to see which artists would jump out and do the collab first, and then it opens the floodgates. So you think we're going to see a lot more high-profile artists collabing with 6 9 in the next few months then? I think we are, but I don't think it's like the artists that we would we think would work with 6 9 before. I mean, like, Nicki, I'm not looking for Nicki. I, honestly, I'm not looking for Nicki to be on those street gangster shit, you know what I mean, and, and holding up coals or whatever the case may be. I'm not looking for, like, Akon. Like, well, I can't say that with Akon. I'm just saying, like, for somebody who has a record label called Convict Music, and this whole foundation of his his music was built on like helping ex cons get opportunities and music and living by codes, that's kind of crazy to me. But other than that, I think technically six be, nine is a convict. Uh, I, whatever, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> whatever, nigga. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think that um when it when when it comes to that, that's that was kind of weird. But I think it's gonna be more safe artists like there's definitely going to be people that work with him i didn't think that people wouldn't work with him mm -hmm. um i just know it's going to be certain artists who, who aren't like a lot of the artists that he worked with before i don't see a boogie ever working with him again little baby working with him again um that's yet to be seen though you know with everybody else uh honestly i was surprised you know uh, um that nikki worked with him like you know I in, if I was to listen to the people who were reacting to him snitching, um, he would be ostracized and only supported by the weird non-urban fan base that he has. So when I see artists who... We don't use have, the word urban anymore, academics. Well, well we might use it here. We're not the Grammys. <laughs> so, so when I see, like, you know, other artists, and I do think there's, you know, maybe not every artist he's worked with in the past, but I think we're gonna see we're gonna be, be we're gonna be surprised each and every time when we're like, wait, oh, you work with him too? And I do think that Nikki took the she took the brunt of the, you know, either backlash she she's first, so to speak. And I think we're gonna be surprised a lot more, honestly. Well, but if that's you why care I wanna know. Her. Do you think it's like it's just her wanting to, you know, I mean she's hot off the Doja Cat record. Do you think that that's like because I know the Doja Cat record, man, like did she, did she catch backlash? I wasn't paying attention. Did she catch backlash for being on the Doja Cat record with all the Doja Cat controversy? Because now she's on two of the most, probably going to be two of the biggest records of 2020 that have, like, bullshit tied to them. Yeah, I don't think she looks at it like that. I mean, I always say, you know, I think that her features are really strategic. I'm wondering how this plays into her upcoming album. Because, you know, you know previously... She took the collab with Six Nine to put on her own album. I'm wondering what the strategy here is, but again, you know, I think most people they've said like Nikki's a little past this. I I don't think that's so. Uh, I don't think so at all. I think Nikki is still someone who's very much competing with, and and you might say this is wrong, but she's competing with Doja. She's competing with Megan Stallion. She's competing with the Cardi B. She wants to be number one constantly. Um, not only for just women who rap but i think just all in hip-hop so you're gonna see some of these collaborations which you know is a slam dunk to get her and have her in that position or around that position so well again and i'll say this in closing right but remember when we was having a debate about like having hit records yeah so do we factor in the features because none of the records that nikki has done you know and, and all due respect because you know i already know how my day is gonna go with the bars but um she hasn't done it with her own record 
I'm saying like it's it's in more recent times like even with the Doja Cat record that's Doja Cat's record she now the verse is dope even with all the Doja Cat shit I actually like that song but it's not Nicki's record so do you think that that is a strategic play for her to get to the top of her record or do you, do you even think that that's gonna happen when she drops something? Yeah, I mean honestly, I it's a wait and see. Like to be honest, I look at it like this. And this is why, like, I think any artist is lucky to have a Nicki feature. Like, you know, I think Doja Cat owes a lot to Nicki. Absolutely. Nicki's fan base, I do think they're a one-week fan base. So, like, they'll help your song, like, chart really well for one week, and then they dip. Because, what, what? They'll get Yikes to debut at top, like, 10 or top 15. And then three weeks later, it's like, you know, Houdini just disappears. You don't know where it went. It's not on the charts no more. But... I look at, like, and that's her record versus the feature. So I think she works really well with, like, you know, doing um, these features and then performing well. I don't know how it really is going to pan out for her own album, but, you know, time will tell. Maybe something changes. Who knows? Yeah, let's see. Maybe right. album rollout plans coming soon. Uh, in the meantime, we haven't heard a lot from Kanye recently. We know he's donated to social justice causes. He's been out there protesting. Uh, but now he has a new feature in ID Magazine, which he did with Pharrell. I'm not sure when they actually... Uh, did this but in it he speaks about the media a lot and how he feels like the media or I don't know all of us criticize him like people did Michael Jackson uh, he said quote we should have something that says we can't allow any company to tear down our heroes not on the shade room not on social media and especially not in documentaries he says every time the media isn't happy with him he feels like here they go they're gonna come and wacko jacko me which in some ways they've tried to do do you guys feel like Kanye has been, you know, vilified much more than, you know, other celebrities? Would you compare it to the level of scrutiny Michael Jackson has? There's a lot to unpack here because the, the Michael yeah. Jackson allegations are a whole different story. But what do you guys think about this? The thing that bugs me out is the most outspoken person wants to erase the First Amendment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't want people to say whatever the fuck they feel like saying. Um, I, I don't know about the whole, like, Michael Jackson thing. I, I think that... Kanye and I, I, me and Atkins have, have had this debate before. I do feel like Kanye is one of the biggest artists ever that if, you know, when it's all said and done, he is ranked among like Michael Jackson and, uh, you know, as an individual artist. But I don't know if, if media has treated Michael Jackson and him the same exact way. Now, the thing about Kanye is like we love him for the same reasons why we hated him. You know, we love the fact that he was willing to be the person to fall on the sword and speak for us, you know, as a community talking about hip hop. And then that kind of changed in later years, you know what I mean? Like, once he started being a little bit out of touch with what was going on with the, on, on the ground, he started saying shit that people just didn't agree with. And I think that as long as you put yourself on a public forum to say however you feel, people are going to say how they feel, and you just got to be able to deal with that shit. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting how Kanye acts. Like, like Kanye, he's out... Like, first of all, there's a lot of people who are either ignorant, who are either not that knowledgeable... Or people who just rather not be that vocal about, you know, certain things like Kanye has done that has gotten them backlash. So, you know, you choose to inject your opinion or you choose to be, you know, aligned with certain people and you do that very publicly. I don't know why he would think that he wouldn't get backlash publicly. Second of all, I, I always detest and de despise when Kanye West tries to almost immortalize his like reputation or like he puts up this guard of hey I'm I did a lot for this culture or I'm one of the heroes so no I'm, I should be beyond being attacked mm -hmm. no like people aren't trying to attack you trying to tear you down sometimes they're trying to make you um um self aware maybe that you they feel you've lacked that and not because you've made some great beats and a couple great jingles means that we're not going to, like, criticize you when we see you're doing things that, you know, socially might not align with your messages previously. So I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I think it's kind of ignorant and a little bit, um, it's a little bit selfish for him to think that because you're a legend, that you just get a free reign and a free pass to just say whatever the fuck you want to do and do what the fuck you want to, like, no, no, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I think for him being such a strong artist, like his his kryptonite is just that he complains a lot. You know what I mean? Like he 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 says all the thing, all the ways he feels, and this that and the third, and that's fine. But it's like, my nigga, if you got an opinion, I got an opinion too. None of us, neither one of us, got to be right. But you can't say that I can't give mine when you give yours. So here's what it is. Well, that's some nice promotion for the shade room, and I'm curious how he thinks that people would police social media. That's like 
<laughs> Trump territories, you know, can't criticize me on social media. That would be nearly impossible. But let's see. Maybe he'll make peace with it at some point. Um, Listen, all you gotta do is just it. label it as fake news. You know what I mean? Follow the Trump way. Label it fake news <laughs> and keep it moving. I learned how to deal with the shade room from academics. Academics always told me, man, listen, they the artists is the ones that give the fucking content. Then they don't want nobody to post it. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you if, if you can't be mad at people saying something about you arguing with your baby mother or you, or or, or uh, something that's going on personal with you when you posting about it. Like if you don't want nobody to know what you're going through, stop talking about your fucking life all the time on social media. That's yeah, yeah, I, I always get surprised at people who are, they love the, you know, the positive side effects of, you know, fame and, you know, what social media or blogs or even the media, you know, um, really help them in their career wise and build them up. But they kind of get really personal with some of the other side effects, you know, like, you know, for better or for worse, if you're into certain type of stuff, you know what the audience of the shade room is going to be. You know what this other site's going to say. Like, I mean, I think for the most part, people know this, you know what I mean? Like you gotta choose whether you're gonna feed into it or, or you could, people could always fall back. There's mad people. Like, have we seen the shade room cover like Andre three thousand the last like like three years like just avidly every day? Like he's with her. Like no, because he right. stayed off the scene. Like you know, it, it, it comes with a cost. Kind of mm -hmm. like you know being out there and kind of using that platform for better or for worse. All right, guys, so earlier in the week, or it might have been last week at this point, the days are all a blur. We had this conversation about some labels starting the push to remove the word urban from all of their verbiage. So now the Grammys, well, the Recording Academy has announced that they're officially going to drop the term urban when it comes to the Grammy Awards. So, for example, Best Urban Contemporary Album will now be called Best Progressive R&B Album. Uh, best Rap Song Performance uh, is going to be called Best Melodic Rap Performance. <laughs> Uh, is this progress? <laughs> Are we making change now? Uh, man, I, I love the <laughs> fact that we got these motherfuckers tap dancing. We got them playing to the beat of our drums, but a lot of that shit is fake love, man. I'm not I'm not going to be confused by the two. You know, like, it, it, that shit sounds good, but that doesn't mean that you feel differently about how you change. Like, have you seen that meme that says, thanks for your Black Lives Matter post, but can I see your, your um, company board? Like, I, I want to know who's the person in there picking these fucking rap albums or picking the shit that they say is best rap or best contemporary rap and all that. I don't care about none of the terms. We just want to see fitness. So they just tap. I feel like they tap dancing that. Straight bullshit. It's window dressing. It's just like, uh, like if you really look at, look at the Grammys is probably, if I had to say it again, I'm giving an amateur opinion here. I'm not supported by super hard facts, but it's just my opinion. The Grammys are probably the most racist element when it comes to music. You get me? Like they've it, they have been a part of maintaining a institution of just racism, even when it comes to just giving out merits. You know, like they don't really fuck with like you know whether it's um what they choose to televise and why they choose to televise it. For first, they ain't televising black awards. Why is that? Is it ratings or you know what I mean? Like nowadays, like uh, uh hip hop is is the most popular genre. Why does some other uh um categories get like more preferred treatment this and third also th this criteria right like this whole criteria of what song falls into whatever right drake could make a song they won't throw it in pop song but they'll throw it at oh he's a nigga let's and he by the way drake mentioned this they'll throw his song in the best rap sung collaboration you get me which, which basically is yeah you rap and sung on, on the album or on that particular song However, that song may have performed, maybe like say like a hotline bling or whatever the case is, it performed like a big pop hit. What's pop? I thought pop was just popular. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into it. I I, I am glad that this is like touching the surface, but this is what we were talking about before. We love your statements. We love your money. Thank you <laughs> for the money. But we need to start looking at y'all companies for real, for real now. So the Grammys, if you really want to get in this conversation, you should have shut the fuck up, put out a statement, and donated some money, and we just <laughs> let you slide. But now if you acting like you changing some shit, he let's really change it, okay? Let's throw some black people on the board. Let's actually make some actionable changes. But it, it, they're probably only going to do this where you're going to get a couple of headlines. They ain't going to go too far. So I agree they that now, now, do we defund the Grammys? <laughs> <laughs> do we defund the Grammys? Dismantle the Grammys? Look, I think that, I think that honestly... Somebody just needs to do a documentary or a 30 for 30 on the Grammys to show all their bias. That's what I feel like. To show all their fucking bias with 
And it's, I don't think it starts, but I think the pinnacle moment was Good Kid, Man City versus Macklemore's album. Man, fuck all of that. All I'm just saying is that <laughs> the people, the people who are like, "Yo, we are your ally." Here's a hundred million. I'm looking at him like, "Yo, that's what I told you." The racists are donating. Like the, it's crazy. The racists are donating for you not to look at them. They're, it's like they're saying, "Go find the other KKK members." Don't look at us. Yo, in reality, no uh, UMG. Um, Warner, Sony, here's a hundred million. We can, we got this whole plan. We have structured it, but nobody want to talk about their system. Like, wait, can, can we talk about how y'all structure deals and how your y'all executives seem to play musical chairs and how you know what I mean? Like, like usually black executives are figureheads, while the other people who we don't know who the fuck they are and they're they're white old as shit. They got all the power. Uh, let's not no, 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 let's not talk about that. And when it comes to um the NFL, oh oh shit. We're kneeling again. It's cool. Like, to keep it real, we were wrong on that. Will they actually be like, you know, we need to get some black owners up in here that we could actually have some diverse conversations, at least at the top? Fuck no. <laughs> Here's some money. We ain't racist. Like, I, I, that's what I'm saying. This whole thing's a sham. Yeah, would the you be down to donating. consult academics if the recording academy offered you in a position on a board where you could share your opinions and such? Would you be down let me, for the people? Let me answer for him real quick. Let me answer for him real quick. <laughs> It depends on the check. <laughs> okay, wait, don't do that. It depends on academics check. Yo, wait, that's no. all it depends oh, nah, on. Hold on, I, I can I, be I'm, bought. I'm, 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 I'm glad, wait, don't start. Yo, wait, no. Wait, no. I'm gonna keep it two Virgils with you, bro. Keep it two Virgils. I'm gonna keep it two Virgils. Keep it two Virgils. Because let's be honest, that that's kind of what Virgil they did with Virgil and Louis Vuitton. Let's very, be very honest. Like, yo, oh, like even with the Gucci thing, what's that mm -hmm. other dude? Dapper Dan be like, oh, y'all think we racist? Hold up, man, we got like our. We got our like friendly yeah, Negro right did. here. He's the one that's gonna consult us on all Negro activities. Again, um, I wouldn't really criticize dudes in that positions. So whether it was uh, like a record label says, you know what, we we want to get a little bit more um, um, uh, alert to racial inequities. Yo, we, we've hired Wayno as a consultant. I'm not gonna call you a sellout or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. All I would still say to you is that that's still a puppeteer. Okay, so the answer is no academics. You wouldn't do it. <laughs> right. No, I ain't saying take okay. I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> okay? Just like I'm keeping it a thousand. Like when people are like, oh, Jay-Z. I'm like, I still think that's a very puppeteer role. This is the consultant that doesn't necessarily have any real power. It's like you put the black figurehead there who may have some trust among the community, but could they make any... Do they have power to pull the lever? You know, I seen somebody they detailed recently a whole plan for the music business to say, if y'all really fuck with black people, how about y'all actually create labels where black people don't have to report to white people and they could actually they're funded enough and they could actually pull the lever. Hmm. They make the decisions, not they suggest to the white guy that they should make that decision. Because it's two different it's two different things. You know what I mean? Hmm. Okay, but so, don't so they need, my, so they my, my need to offer you a mega Blessings. check. All right, that's what I took away from all of that. All right, <laughs> look, I'm not Jay Z. Let's let's He's that end. That same shark on his shirt. <laughs> let's end with this one. Um, to end on a light note, I suppose. All right, so to Tory Lanez and Spectacular from Pretty Pretty Ricky, sorry, had some beef a few days Pretty ago over sample clearance. So this started uh, when Tory was jokingly calling out Akon on Twitter for giving uh, Six Nine the locked up sample. Then Spectacular called out Tory and said, "You should have just stole it, like grind on me and your body. Why stop now? Just keeping it to Virgils." So Tory responded by denying that he ever stole the sample. He said, "I bought the rights from whoever signed you and publishes your music, but I guess you weren't part of the conversation." Then there were jokes about Tory's new hairline, and then Tory popped up with some receipts for the shade room, uh, showing that he paid for this. Talk to me, Ak. You were uh, excited to weigh in on this one. No, no, I, I was definitely excited to weigh in on this because when it comes to like you know, um, people who think they might have their ducks in order or they might think they got their paperwork right. You know, the very famous line that, you know, uh, uh, Wayno's mentor, CEO, and low-key, you know what I mean, Step Pops, said... See, that, see yo. why you gotta go there? <laughs> That's why you gotta go there? But he said, listen, he said, yo, I know who I paid God. I paid Searchlight Publishing when he was dissing Nas. I mean, it, it rings true. You know, sometimes people, like, like the business behind music gets a little hazy, and a lot of times artists are uninformed and think that they their approval or their go ahead is always needed in certain situations when they've either given up the power of attorney or shit if you're in a group situation 
if if the majority of the group already voted, they don't need you. You get me? So right. everything else is cute except except when a nigga provide the paperwork, which you know Tory, he one of them short niggas that got the Napoleon complex. He don't like losing nothing. He was gonna go all the way. He's pulling out all type of paperwork. So of course I believe Tory. Um, but to keep it real. I felt bad for Pretty Ricky, man. I felt bad for Spectacular in particular. It looked like Pleasure P was, you know, took all that money and, um, you know, like the, the other dude had to find out in the blogs, okay? Hey, man. It's nobody's business to teach you business. <laughs> A white Pretty man Ricky. named Wayno once said. <laughs> <laughs> all right, right, guys, that is our show for today. Any final thoughts from you gentlemen before we leave for the weekend? Stay dangerous. <laughs> That's my final thought. Listen, tonight our goal is to figure out which fake account Wayno is gonna be in Six Nine Live, to, like trolling on. Yo, Wayno gonna nah. be in that bitch. Wayno, I don't, have to, I don't even have to use the, the the burner account because you're gonna see everything anyway. You're gonna post the shit all over your page. You know what I'm saying? Like he has a lifetime membership with you, so <laughs> why do I have to go? Why do I have to troll his page when I could just I follow you? So I'll be fine. I'll be able to see the bullshit that you that you that you're perpetuating. Yeah, I, hold on. I do have one little small point though. Mm -hmm. I, uh, actually, I said for another time. I said, right, it's a great it. point. It's a great <laughs> point, but it's like a ten-minute point. <laughs> I just want to be like, wait, no. I'm just saying, if they offer you five hundred billion no, dollars no, no. to work with, I, I was just gonna say, <laughs> I, I was just only gonna introduce because you know I I've heard that criticism and I just look at it like this, yo. Bro, I'm a civilian, not no super tough type or whatever dude. I understand what hip hop is, but also like I do look at everybody's hypocrisy, and I'm like, y'all gotta just t let's keep it just all the way. Let's keep it two Virgils, and y'all gotta tell me is it black or is it white, or are we in the gray area? Y'all fuck with people who snitch or y'all don't, because I ain't gonna lie. Man, yo, you could talk birdie. about snitching for the rest of 2020 and still not understand the fundamental concept. So I say, <laughs> right. let's just, we're done. I'm tired of no, talking no, no, about no, no, snitching. No, 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 no she works for, for a company that's ran by Jay Z. She was seeing Pitcher walking out of court with Meek Mill. She was supposedly a, a, a DEA informant who got busted with coke. <laughs> Nobody cares about that. We care about this other stuff. So is it one stitch or the other? I don't know, I, man. Why don't Regardless, you know, I'm you here. Know, once the, once <laughs> the bands are lifted and we can move about the world, go ahead and do the documentary on snitching. Go do the, the thirty doc, for thirty. Yeah. That, that seems like a dangerous documentary. Yeah, exactly. You go take care of it, though. That, in you guys. Right. That, that you seems like a dangerous documentary. Everyday struggle. We'll see you here on Monday. We need a Nadeska's like really investigative journalism on this one, not me.